Hola mi gente, this is Mali's Mundo and today I'm going to be talking about some of my biggest culture shocks that I experienced living in Spain. I find the topic of culture shocks super interesting because no matter who you are or where you come from, when you move to a different country, you will experience things that will surprise you and leave you confused about why your own culture is so different. So personally, I live in Spain two times. One time I lived in the south of Spain in Sevilla and the second time I lived in Madrid. Now, both of these experiences, let me just start by saying some of the best times of my life. I mean, yo amo, 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 amo vivir en España. So by sharing this list, I don't want to come across as saying that like the United States is better, that Spain is better. These are just the things that as somebody from the United States that I found really interesting or different from my own culture. Culture shock number one that I experienced in Spain as someone from the United States is definitely the horario, the times that people do things in general in Spain. So the first time when I was studying there, I was shocked <laughs> by the fact that people there eat lunch and dinner at such different times than here in the US. Here in California, I usually probably eat lunch maybe around 12 and then dinner, depending on the season, can be any time between six and eight. Eight is pretty late for us here. Now, if you go to Spain, and especially in the summer or parts of Spain that are a little bit hotter, people tend to eat later because this is when, you know, the time cools down. And in general, it's just a super late country. It's really normal in Spain to eat dinner at like 10 p.m. or even 11 p.m. You'll go out to a restaurant and it will be full at midnight. It was something that was so different for me. Um, being from the United States, we have a pretty early schedule in general. So that was something that I found interesting. On top of not only eating late, everything in Spain is also late. Going out to party, for example, I, when I was in university, it was so interesting that the night didn't even start until about 12.30. There, you know, most of the time you might do like a little pregame at someone's house, maybe at like 10.30 or 11 and then after that you wouldn't even leave to go out to a bar or a club until 12 30 as earliest and then usually you stay out until about 6 to 8 a.m it is a crazy schedule and as somebody from california most everything shuts at 1 30 if we're going to a bar or a disco so for me experiencing that there was so different from what i was used to and sometimes it's really fun but it's also really exhausting which is why the spanish siesta is pretty nice to have speaking of the spanish siesta the second thing that shocked me about living in spain was the siesta or the time of day that everything shuts in Spain because it is siesta. Now, this can actually be seen in certain parts of Spain more than others. In Sevilla, a lot more businesses and restaurants shut down between the hours of about three to five where literally everything, almost everything is shut. In Madrid, I didn't experience this as much being that it's such a big city. Most businesses Monday through Saturday will stay open. But yeah, in the South of Spain, there's a couple hours in the middle of the day where everything is shut. So if you wanna to go to the grocery store, if you need to run an errand, try not to run it in the middle of the day because that's your time to rest and take a nap. On top of only siesta, something about being from the United States that also shocked me about being in Spain is that almost everything is closed on Sundays. Now this is pretty standard for most of Europe. Most Catholic dominant countries tend to be like this as well. Sundays in Spain are usually considered days for family time, getting together with your friends, going for a walk in the park, something that's more of an activity and not running your errands. Whereas here in the United States, most people get all of their errands done on Sundays, especially where I live. You know, you do your grocery shopping, you do, you know, all of, you go to the pharmacy, everything that you need to get done, you usually get done on a Sunday. But in Spain, you won't be able to do that. So just keep that in mind. If you're gonna be living there, don't try and go to the grocery store on a Sunday. The next thing that was a pretty big culture shock for me being from the United States and living in Spain was how many vacations in general Spaniards get in the year. I think this is great. Um, in the US, we usually only get Get about seven to ten days of holidays during the year and usually if you work in a normal business job you'll probably get about two weeks max of vacation time which you have to earn by the way whereas in Spain when I was working in Madrid I used to get so many vacations I mean you get one to two weeks just for Easter you get a whole week or two weeks for Christmas they usually get all of August off for summer vacations I mean there are so many breaks which I find great in Spain they even have these things called puentes, which are when you have a three or four day weekend. It literally means a bridge. There's a puente almost every single month. I even remember my coworkers that were Spanish would complain when we didn't have a puente each month. And I just thought that was really 
really funny. But I do miss my point this being back in the United States, but that was definitely something that I found to be really nice about living in Spain is that they had a really nice work-life balance. Another thing that I found pretty interesting as somebody from the United States living in Spain was the fact that people had a really good grasp on work-life balance. Here in the US, being that we are an extremely capitalistic country, we tend to not have a great balance between work and free time. Whereas in Spain, I found that people's general attitude towards work was more, I have to be here to make a living so that I can live the life that I want to live. And I thought that was really great. You know, people Monday through Friday would still go out, you know, and get a drink with your friend or go do activities. It wasn't like you got home from work and that's all that you cared about. It was pretty interesting. I thought that was really nice and definitely super different from what I'm used to here in the United States. Another thing that was pretty interesting that I found about Spain is just the way that people dress and present themselves in general compared to the way that we dress in the United States. I would say that certain parts of the US dress more formal than others. But in general, for example, in California, we tend to dress pretty casual in public. Like you can wear your gym clothes to go grocery shopping. Some people even wear pajamas, which I don't do, but some people do that. And in general, we have like a pretty relaxed, beachy style here. In Spain, however, pretty much no matter where you're going, you have to dress from US standards would be semi-formal. I mean, I would go to the grocery store in a nice top, you know, maybe jeans. It is definitely a place that you don't want to go out in public just wearing whatever. People tend to really care about what they look like, especially in places like Madrid, where most of your life and most of your day is going to be in public. People really do put a lot of effort into their appearance and kind of how they present themselves to the world, which I find pretty different from here in the US. We tend to be really individualistic here, so we don't really think too much about what other people are perceiving us as, which can be a good thing and a bad thing in my opinion. But yeah, people tend to dress pretty formal there. So if you're planning on going to Spain or moving there, think about that. Um, I would definitely pack clothes that are a little bit more just nice looking in general, still be comfortable of course, wear nice comfortable shoes, but in general you won't see too many basketball shorts or leggings out in public unless you're going to the gym. One other thing that really shocked me in a good way about living in Spain is how genuine people really are once you become friends with them. I've heard this comment by a couple other people who live in the US that are from other countries, but they tend to say that here in the US we're really really nice up front. Like you walk on the street, you see people People smiling, people are gonna ask, how are you? You might talk to somebody and think they're your best friend. But then later on, it's kind of hard to get through to people from the US usually. We tend to be really open people, but if someone needs a favor, for example, or if you really need a good friend to stick by your side, it's a little bit harder here to make those long lasting friendships. However, I found that in Spain, where people might not be as bubbly and outgoing at the surface like we are here in the US, once you make friends with a Spanish person, they will have your back. And I really love that. I mean, there are times that I really needed help and my Spanish friends were there for me no matter what. And in a lot of the other countries I've been to, it's like this. People are really, really down for you once they become your friend. I have so many more on my list of Spanish culture shocks, but I would love to know para los que son de España y están viviendo acá en Estados Unidos, ¿Cuáles son tus culture shocks que experimentaste aquí en mi país? And for those of you who are from the United States that are living in Spain or have lived in Spain, what are some of the culture shocks that you experienced while living there? I find this topic super interesting. I would love to know and it would definitely be helpful for anybody who's doing some research right now, trying to see if they want to move to Spain or move to the US. So drop that in the comments, let me know. And overall, I just wanted to say, me cambió la vida España. The people, the nature, the country as a whole is so beautiful. España siempre, siempre, siempre va a tener un pedazo de mi corazoncito. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining my video today. Espero que tengan todos una linda semana y los veo en el próximo video. Chao.